Hi, hello everyone. I'm Rob, if you don't know me, and we're going to continue our day, our, our walk through uh, the Gospel of Mark. Uh, today we're going to be looking at chapter 7, verses 1 to 23. I'm going to be reading from the Revised Standard Version, but you use whatever preferred translation that you have, and you can then see if uh, what, are, what my thoughts and reflection on this passage is something that relates to you, or maybe you come up with something different, which is perfectly fine. So I'm going to read through the passage and then go through what I got in, fr from this passage. Now, when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, observing the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they purify themselves, and there are many other traditions which they observe, the washing of cups and pots and vessels of bronze. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with hands defiled? And he said to them, Where did, Well, did Isaiah prophecy of you hypocrites as it is written the people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me in vain do they worship me teaching as doctrine the precepts of men you leave the commandments of god and hold fast the traditions of men and he said to them you have a fine way of rejecting the commandments of god in order to keep your traditions for moses said honor your father and your mother and he who speaks evil of your father or mother, let him surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, what you would have gained from me is Corban, that is, given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God through your tradition, which you hand on, and money, many such things you do. And he called the people to him again, and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand, there is nothing outside a man which by going to him can defile him. But the things which come out of a man are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then you are also without understanding. Do you not see that whatever goes into a man from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart? but his stomach, and so passes on. Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, What comes out of a man is what defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a man. So, my thoughts. At this point uh, in the Gospel, um, this is where we meet, um, perhaps in a more pronounced way, what I like to call the radical Jesus. Um, radical in lots of ways, but in this context, specifically in a Jewish sense. So here we have the, the Pharisees and the scribes questioning the practices of the disciples they are not washing their hands they are as the passage describes it eating with unclean or defiled hands and jesus response to the pharisees is to quote Isaiah at them he quotes the prophet and essentially tells them that you are paying lip service to god that your tradition is just paying lip service to god and there's no heart or real meaning about it in their hearts they are corrupted he goes on to state that this corruption has led them to valuing their man-made traditions over the word of god and he uses the example of the fifth commandment here of honor your father and your mother jesus then explains um that it would be expected of a child as they grew up to repay repay back and, and probably repay is the wrong word but it was their duty in a fam familial sense of way to help provide for their mother and father as the mother and father had helped look after them when they were children in childhood and you know it was just it is part of the common practice um 
within the Jewish tradition. And, and to be fair, we see it all the time in society where we, where we have elderly parents and, and we do our utmost to, to look after them. And, and we do it out of love. Not so much a sense of duty, as I said, but again, you got to remember where this is a point where everything is being written down, and the Pharisees are pursuing the pure letter. And we already know Jesus preaches on um, how the letter of the law flies in the face of the spirit of the law. So anyway, what Jesus points out is is that the Pharisees are currently teaching a practice where um, a child can be excused from helping to look after his mother and father and provide for them if that child provides a sufficient altar gift, an altar sacrifice. So something that is classed as being given over to God, the Pharisees are saying is the same, if not better, that you're giving it to to God. It's been given over to God. Of course, we know God himself describes he has no desire of burnt offerings or any of these things, they they, they don't please him, um, and he certainly would have no use for wealth or food or anything else that a child would most likely be helping their mother and father with. So Jesus then rounds it off by specifically pointing out to them that they have, as a result, voided the word of God and the spirit of the law of the law through a man-made tradition and so this i like the that's the first part of this passage and for me what it really brings to the forefront in my mind um along with many things but the most prominent thought is the discussion slash arguments that the church is having with itself right now because of lockdown and the restrictions that's put on church gatherings and church worship there is a mass discussion going on with various people in the church and there is a there is a debate pretty heated at times those who are arguing that tradition should absolutely be not be changed and x y and z and there are those arguing that actually tradition can be adapted um, as long as it's faith-filled truly heart-filled truly spirit-filled and it can be easily adapted. And indeed, I think it's safe to say which 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 side I might fall on. But I'm not going to um, get into the crux of that argument. All I'm saying is in that argument, there are people that are arguing that um, without the tradition, um, it degrades the authenticity of the faith. While there are those who are arguing that as long as it's, you know, based in the word of God, that is Jesus um, and it's prayerful and it's heart filled and it's spirit filled, then it probably is as authentic as it needs to be. Now, me personally, as those who know me know, I am someone who has a, a great love of some 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 traditions that we have. I think they are important. I think they can help in one's spirit uh, faith journey in 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 helping feel closer to God. That being said, though. Tradition should never come at the price of the spirit. As Jesus himself would say, it's tradition is really, really important. I would not say it isn't. But at the same time, it doesn't it does not trump the importance of faith in the practice of how you do church or how you follow out the gospel and in fact that's the more important thing your faith and this is a prime example of scripture that reminds us of that jesus himself is reminding that he's not trying to, he's never trying to dismiss tradition what he's trying to say is when tradition gets to the point where you're going through the motions and you're paying lip service to something and your tradition has become the most important thing and not the connection to God, then there's an issue, and and I I can't I can't disagree. I I would be a fool to disagree. And for me, with the discussions and the debates that are going on at the moment, this is a fantastic piece of scripture that reminds us to actually go, hey, we can have these discussions, we can have these debates, but ultimately it's about our faith and our faith in God and how we connect with God. 
and ultimately overall the tradition is not is not i don't think going to be wholly important to god it is a man-made construct and does god really care for those man-made constructs we can answer that question because jesus here says no not really it's all about living by god's spirit but ironically and perhaps not given given that it's scripture we're talking about here in jesus um the second part of this of this passage um also directly relates to what brought to my mind um with these debates that the church is which is the debates the church is having um because in the second half when jesus goes on to declare that nothing we consume can defile us and remember as a jew um you have the food laws and things like that and he is now just essentially declared all food clean so radical jesus once again from a jewish perspective jesus argues the point though that as things we eat go through to our stomach and not our hearts and then simply pass out and leave us um they cannot defile us the things instead which defile us are the things that come from within so from within our hearts from within our minds we we can come out with some horrible things deceit wickedness slander and here jesus is reminding us that we choose to do those things we 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 choose to act in that manner if we choose to act and slander someone we are making that choice and when we do make that choice and we decide to do those things we are defiling ourselves and it's this defilement that we should be concerned about. It is, it is important for us to remember that being a Christian does not make us immune to these things. Far from it. As some of those debates I was talking about earlier clearly indicate, we get carried away with ourselves, we get angry, we get upset, and then we make a choice and we say something that isn't particularly Christian and sane. And it's a defilement. So what the second part of the passage, I think, really, really helps with is it helps us to go back to basics. And going back, from, going back to basics from a Christian perspective is about going back to scripture and it's going back to the guide that Jesus gave us. And it's about acting as Jesus would have acted, about trying to act in that Christ-like manner. In that Christ-like manner, we have to choose love over hate forgiveness over vengeance and purity of our heart and of our spirit over things that ultimately to God don't make don't make a huge bit of importance tradition is importance yes tradition can help yes but as I said earlier it's about living in that Christ-like manner and it's when we get passages like this that really are timeless and they speak volumes for the current time that we're living in. And what a profound message that this passage ends on. That it's the things from within us that defile us. It's a warning about some of the darker impulses that we have as people. And it's really, really important. It really, really made me think of everything that's been going on in terms of debate. And there's been some really great stuff as well. We, 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 it's worth to mention that as much as here is Jesus speaking about what defiles a man, we know that equally Jesus talks about what can lift up a person, what can help purify them. And it's very much the love and the forgiveness and the whole nature that Christ presents throughout the Gospels. But this passage is a stark reminder and a stark message about the fact that we are capable of making a choice that can defile us. And I, that's important. We do have a choice. And Jesus encourages us to make a particular choice. Because the opposite, the choice we know 
that sometimes even in the heat of anger we might really like to do. The bitterness that we can have when someone speaks bad about us. That bitterness can grow inside of us and it can twist us up. And all it does at the end of the day is spread out more pain. Not just to other people but within ourselves. It twists us, it deforms us, it defiles us. And I think this is what this passage is a fantastic reminder of. Within us we have the capacity to act and we can choose what defiles us or we can choose what cleanses us and what purifies us. But those were my main thoughts from this passage with everything that's going on and where I'm at. What do you think? Did, did, did this speak to you in any way similar or did you have extra thoughts? Do you have more thoughts? As always, it's a reflection. Discuss. And thank you for listening.